Welcome back to another episode of All Takes With Podcast. I'm Alex. This is Christian. And on this episode, we have a special guest with us. We have Flobo Boyce with us. And I'm excited uh, to have you with us this week. I uh, mean, I'm excited to be on the show talking baseball. I love it. And more, of course. I mean, the podcast is dope. It's on fire. And number 25 is my favorite number. So it all works out. Yes, sir. Uh, we had that planned ahead of time for sure. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> So, Flobo, before we get into the specifics, do you want to tell us a little about yourself? Oh, yeah, man. Uh, whew, how do I? I do a lot of things. So, I yeah. am a stand up comedian, slash, uh, esports caster, slash, podcaster. I have a, a wrestling podcast on the Spotify network called the uh, Mac Mania. Um, born and raised in Brooklyn, uh, lived in Florida for a couple of years, now I live in Los Angeles. So, I've been around the world, around the country, and I do a lot of things, but uh, I think it's the best way to describe what I'm doing. I'm entertainment. I'm a live entertainment professional. Whether or not you want your, your wedding DJ'd or you want someone to the keynote speak one of your events, I'm the guy you call. Nice. If you don't mind me asking, uh, what was uh, the first thing out of, out of those ventures that you got into? Oh, that's actually a good question. So I came out to, to California back in 2007 to, to be a filmmaker. And uh, mm -hmm. I wanted to to be a film editor and, and cut the films and, and be part of that booth. And what happened was my film school kind of separated us by what we wanted to do. Even though I was the editing student, I wanted to write as well. And so I, I wrote these scripts. And my directing classmates didn't want to make the movies. And so I made my scripts into short stories. So writing came first. So I would say I'm an I'm a author first, you know, and, and that kind of led itself to comedy because now you're writing for humor, writing for jokes. I did a comedy in 2014. So I'm like on year eight now uh, doing that. And so when the uh, filmmaking thing didn't really work out and then the writing stuff worked, I got jobs doing that as well. So it kind of all came together. The writing, the performing, going out there, being comfortable with a microphone, being comfortable with a stage. And so far it's paid dividends, you know, the, the, mm -hmm. the training of just taking uh, a challenge or a block in life and just pivoting and doing something cool with that, you know? One of the cool things about, about being an entertainer is that you kind of go where you're booked. And, and so sometimes when I DJ weddings and say the officiant can't make it, right? I'm an ordained minister. If I, if I jump in, I do that too. But if I was somebody who wasn't used to using a microphone or if I was somebody who just focused on one thing, I wouldn't be able to step up and pivot and do all those things. So it took me 15 years of my career, um, again, dating myself. But now you can actually Google my name and my stuff comes up. It took like a long time. You know, for a while, it was all Flowbot stuff. Remember that band from the mid-2000s? Uh, but yeah, I can say I made it. Now, that's dope to hear. And it's just real nice to hear that it was a process because that's motivating in a way. Because with this podcast, with our ventures, um, I'm only 23, pretty young myself. Uh, that's right. Yeah, I just feel like it's it's real. It's a reassuring to hear that You're just sticking to the process, it it'll work out. Oh, yeah, you know what? I'd like not to do the plug real quick, but my latest book is called Graduation Day and it's available on Amazon. And the whole premise of that was uh, when I graduated college, uh, uh, what year did I graduate? In 07. I thought the whole world was going to be one thing. Oh, when I turn 25, it's going to be this. And then and on age 30, I'm going to retire on an island somewhere. And uh, things always change, things flip. Jobs you want say no. Jobs you thought were dope say they were terrible. You know, your fame is looking at you like a certain kind of way. And that's something that I had to work through. And, and, and it's cool to be able to look at something and say, look, it's not a step back, it's a step aside. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, even though I can say I'm a comedian and entertainer now, and that's what pays my bills. I mean, I've sold groceries door to door with two college degrees. Uh, I worked at Target in the back unloading the truck. <laughs> I mm -hmm. sold oscilloscopes. And I sold hand sanitizer door to door before the pandemic. So no one really cared about sanitizing. I yeah. mean, a lot of stupid jobs, man, to, to be able to do what I could do today. So uh, no, just keep at it, bro. Whatever you, you want to do, your career, just, just make sure you don't forget about that. Pay your bills. Don't be out there and getting all yourself all hungry and stuff. But don't forget about the, the side hustles and all that. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. So um, you actually brought up your book. I'm actually kind of more a little more interested in that. Do you want to dive a little deeper into that? Yeah, for sure. So I was a fiction writer for a long time and well, no one bought my fiction books. And so I said, you know what, I'm gonna do one more book and I'm retired from writing. This is about, this is 2020, this is the pandemic. And so I wanted to write a nonfiction memoir about my life. Uh, but the premise is called Graduation Day where the first chapter, I really talk about the day I graduated college 
and what I thought I wanted to accomplish. But every chapter thereafter was a story from my life and a life lesson I learned that college didn't teach me. I mean, college is great for the academics. It's great for learning social strata and hanging out and even testing some relationships uh, with uh, romantic or otherwise. But at the same end of the day, what I learned about, for example, starting a business and watching it fail and understanding, oh man, I spent hundreds upon thousands of dollars of advertising that I waste my time. Or when I was in college, I weighed 375 pounds. When I graduated, I had lost 150. How to go about doing that? Or when I was a wedding DJ and I was struggling to find a name for myself and my business before that another business was going to fail, a couple said, hey, look, you DJ my wedding in Italy. And I said, sure. Not having a dime to my name because I thought if I can do it, that I can get myself some notoriety in the DJ circuit. And I did it and I lost a crap load of money that week. But it ended up working out for me in the back end when someone goes, oh, wow, we saw your photos on Instagram. Let's have some more business. And so it was kind of like all these stories I learned, cause never taught me. So I have that in more detail. In the last chapter of the book, I really write a commencement speech as if my college asked me to do one because, you know, mm. why not? <laughs> that's just, that's, that sounds just dope in concept. That's oh, yeah. Thank crazy. you so much. You know, it's, 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 I mean, I'm not sure where you're from exactly, Christian, but like, Growing up in Brooklyn, man, it was not many options. You know, entertainment to them was like either like sports or like rapid. And to be able to say, oh, wait, no, I, I DJ high-end weddings in Los Angeles or I do stand-up comedy. My parents didn't know how to support me. They're kind of like, as long as you're happy? Like, I don't know <laughs> what the hell that is. And so uh, being able to do that and, and, and live to tell about it, man, it's, it's, it's kind of a, a blessing in that way. No, I, I get what you're saying. I'm I'm close to New York, uh, where I'm from. I'm from Providence, Rhode Island, actually. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, Providence. That's uh, I listen to Crime Town. I love that podcast. Mm. <laughs> yeah, by the C. Anty, uh, <laughs> the old school mayor. Yeah. Have you ever been up there? No, I haven't. Uh, I went as far as far as far as North Connecticut, but never been to Rhode Island before. Mm. I got to put it in there because I heard so many cool things about Providence, the city on two hills. Is that what it was? Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's alright. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I would say Providence is a little similar to New York. Um, it was tough being a Yankees fan in New England. Uh, I just wanted to ask you, though, uh, being from New York, being from Brooklyn, yeah. being a Mets fan, I, I have a feeling most people from New York I run into are Mets fans for some reason. It, it's oh, it's a yeah. little weird knowing how yeah. popular the Yankees are. Uh, uh, okay, so I'm trying to do this without without shame. Uh, because... <laughs> No, because I'm trying to. I'm trying to be as honest. I really think. I really think the Yankee organization is the gold standard of baseball. If you don't know anything about baseball, you know about the Yankees, right? Will mm. not Will Smith, uh, Jay Z or Fred Durst made the Yankee hat like iconic in fashion. People in Japan be wearing Yankees merchandise. It's just that good. How many championships? Mm. They say 27, but half of those championships were Negroes couldn't play baseball. But whatever. Mm. <laughs> it's kind of like a brand. It's like it's like the love of baseball. When you find someone who is a Mets fan. Because for so long, we were so bad. <laughs> I mean, terrible. Like, it was like Lol Mets. It's kind of like this connection to the city. So it becomes like almost like a, like a, like a, a gut-level New York symbol. Like, there's always somebody who has a connection to New York when they have a Mets hat. Maybe not so much now with Cohen having the team. But back in the Wilpon days, the Double Day days, it was always like, I was a fan. My mom was a fan. I was laid over in a fight to England for a day. So I went to Shea Stadium because tickets were cheap, <laughs> you mm. know, and it became fans that way. This is why when I see someone with a Mets hat, I'm always like, let's go Mets. And then they go, yeah, let's go Mets. It became like a connecting type deal. So, uh, plus, but the Yankees are trash. That's that's my hate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's the shit. I agree with you. I was waiting that. for this shit. <laughs> <Okay. every day. laughs> uh. You at least messing with what Judge is doing this year? Oh, when it becomes the Met next year, it's going to be great. Uh, <laughs> did, did, did you see first take this morning? <laughs> Stephen A's like, please, Yankees, please sign him. Sign him. That's that's how I'm feeling. That's how all of us got to be feeling because, yeah, if we let Aaron Judge slip up after this kind of season, just yeah. like I – know, I know the Yankees are iconic and all. Just relocate at that point. You get out of New York. <laughs> get out of New York and carry signs up. The Charlotte Yankees, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> But yeah, no, that'd be dope if you guys picked up a, another big name because you guys are already in the mix as is, uh, you know, in a pretty tight race, but an entertaining race with the Braves right now. And I'm not saying, yeah, I feel like you guys could pull it off now with a solid run in the postseason, but especially with another name. Please let it not be Judge, but another right. name. Yeah. Can we talk about the NL, NL East race? I've never seen 
98 game winning teams still not clenching a division. <laughs> like no. what? It's I, crazy. I, I my goodness me, man. Look, on one hand, I love it the like the anime movie of it all, like defending champion, new contender. It's all really mm-hmm. cool. But like the whole league is waiting to go. They're all clenched up except for us, and every <laughs> game is a battle, man. It sucks. I'm losing so many years of my life watching these games, man. And it's even better that it's coming down to this weekend, too. It's the best pitchers for each team are going to be pitching, and it's going to be great. I can't wait for this weekend. Is Strider back or are you still injured? Strider can't come back until the first Excellent. day after the regular season. <laughs> yeah, he, he, can't, he can't pitch this weekend, unfortunately. Oh, man. It's going to be a tough series. Three three games at Truist Park, uh, I guess with the hurricane or – Things that's pretty much done with. So they're gonna play all the games there at normal schedule time. And DeGrom was looking for a bounce back game. Uh that's someone I, I worry that may walk or not get signed when the season's mm-hmm. over. I hope we do resign him. Um, but you know, whatever determines the money he demands or whatnot. But it's gonna be a marquee matchup. And and I bet any any network will be falling over themselves, uh, kicking themselves if they weren't covering the game. Man, Alex has been mentioning this series coming up this weekend to me since right after the All-Star break. And he was saying that, yeah, it, it's going to come down to this series. Uh, he just had a feeling, and look at today. It's real crazy. I was I was honestly going right, to – I'm going to put my opinion out there. I thought the Braves were definitely going to uh, you know, hit the ground running the second half and take a lead and kind of run away with the division. Nothing against the Mets, but like I just really want to be proven – I want the Mets to really prove that they're like that now. Yeah, I know that's fair. Because well, let's say this way: baseball Twitter is different because I will fight. Because <laughs> <laughs> they don't put it on the worst people on the planet. Um, but you look at what what makes the Braves so good is that if you get caught slipping with this one hanging ball, it's over because everyone goes moonshots with that town. Uh, and it's just such a very home run heavy team. And so you probably think yourself that the, the opposite is small ball. The Mets, yeah, we have home runs, but. Usually when we produce runs, it's the opposite. This is like the best yin and yang I have seen between two teams in a long time. And on top of that, it's my team. Usually it's like, oh, I wish we were like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but, we're, but we're in the mix. And so even though the Braves, like we can always scoff at them, or as Mets fans, we all remember the Chipper Jones era, the Andrew Jones era, the Larry era, how he would come to, to say Stadium and totally just silence us and destroy us. But, you know, I'd rather have this. How sad would it be if, like, the Braves went on the losing streak, got slipped, slipped down into like, you know, the fourth seed or fifth seed, and we're like playing in the Padres or something. It's not the same. Yeah. Like you, the defending champions against a team that no one pretty much thought they're going to be there, that's that's the stories you make. And if the Braves somehow win, well, I hope not, <laughs> then no <laughs> one can say that 2021 was a fluke, right? And if the Mets do it, then you can say, hey, there's a new sheriff in town. It's the same division. It's all good. Now, to your point there, Christian, you hater. Um, <laughs> if you see last night's game against the Marlins, I'm not sure what this is released, but there's a game against the Marlins where we were down 4 nothing, mm-hmm. And Escobar literally put the team on his back and put five RBIs on himself and said, scored, batted in five runs by himself to beat yeah. this team. That would never have happened a year ago. That would have never happened. We would have just pretty much rolled over and died. So this is a whole different team, man. Yeah, and see, that's what I like about the Mets this year is usually it's good in the first half, fall apart in the second half. And the second half is where I wanted to see y'all, like, stay steady. Y'all, at the beginning of September, faltered a little bit, but then started to pick it back up here recently. And that's that's what I want. I wanted a tight division race down the end because I wanted it to come down to that last series at the end of the year. I wanted to go to it. I can't, but oh, it, really? it's – yeah, I got work this weekend, but oh man, yeah. call sick. <laughs> oh, I wish, I wish, I wish. Yeah, well, if you're a surgeon, don't do that. I'm kind of messed up. <laughs> yeah, no. I wish my game instead. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, but you're right. It everyone was strong for what it was, and every time because I went to the first game in Oakland this last weekend where we won, uh, and I was going to go to the second game, and I was like, ah, I shouldn't go. Good thing I didn't. But when that happened, when we got blown out by the Oakland Athletics, which is literally the worst team in baseball, if you're not really following the sport, those listeners, uh, doom and gloom all over Twitter. It was like, oh, we're done. Pack it in. We suck now. I'm like, dude, 95 wins and we suck? Like, it's just it's just so fever pitch right now because you know what's at stake, you know? 
Yeah, and when it comes to Twitter and stuff, I really don't pay attention to the baseball Twitter because it doesn't matter if you lose one game. You could win 10 games in a row and lose one game, and Twitter's just going to freak out. It's ridiculous. True. I try to avoid it, but I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you. When, like, the Phillies blow a game, I check out their oh. Twitter. It's always <laughs> fun when, they, when they're hitting yeah. themselves. That's pretty. The Phillies are fine. You can do that for the Phillies. <laughs> I love my team, but I'm, I'm going to just call it like it is. Yankees Twitter might just be the worst thing in existence. Like it, it is horrible. I just remember, re- remember when Judge cooled off just a little after his initial hot streak this season. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember people t- mentioning trading. I'm just like, what? I would say Yankee Twitter got better when, when early this season when you guys were struggling and it was right before you traded uh, Montgomery and Gallo. Mm. I felt like you guys were like going to jump off cliffs every night. We suck. I can't believe it. Like the thickest New York accents, like guys in there wearing their like the tank tops, <laughs> you know, yelling that there are significant others. It was great. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, that, that was a tough time. Um, I was really of the opinion that we needed to let go of Gallo ASAP. Not even like hating on him, but it was just like both sides needed to part ways. Mm-hmm. And they made the move. Uh it took some time, and honestly, not until September really where we got like a solid footing again because it, it was almost looking like a collapse for a second, but you know, we've been oh, yeah. playing well as of recent. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was, I was really happy that the three week stretch was pretty fun because what it was it, again, back to what we were saying earlier uh, is that the Mets collapsed. We, I remember Oh seven. I mean, that was the first year I was in California and, and then watching the games because I was homesick trying to get connection back to New York and watching that, that September. It just, everyone just, just cratering and next year doing it again. And even last year we thought we we're going to be, Oh, maybe there's something. Nope. <laughs> you know? And so for the Yankees to do it would have been so great, but to your credit, you guys held on. Now the Astros are bulldozer. I'm not really sure oh. what the plan is against them. We were owing forward them this year. I think you guys split the series. The Braves did right. But, uh, mm-hmm. but uh, when it comes down, I mean, that's the 900 pound gorilla is the Astros. Cause they're looking for blood, but if you guys pass them then respect. As long as the Astros don't have to play the Orioles, they're fine. <laughs> yeah, the Orioles yeah. own them. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> yeah, the Astros just straight up have our number. Uh, I hate to say it, I'm kind of scared from them. Uh, scared of them from that perspective because they just keep doing it. They lose a couple players. They bring up a couple of guys that are just f- filling out that role to to a T. And yeah. uh. Yeah, it's it's kind of tough with the Astros. I Alex, Alex hears me bring this up all the yeah. time. I'm a Yankees fan, so obviously I'm going for my team. Uh, the Astros shortstop Jeremy Pena. Uh, he's a friend from back home. Oh, sure. I, I, I definitely I, I want to see him shine. I want to see him, you know, doing his but thing. But you don't want to see level. the Astros win. <laughs> but like, yeah, so it's like I'm just kind of. Uh. When I'm watching, like, I have the MLB app or whatever. I usually watch Astro games and I root for them uh, only because I, I like I like Baker. He's a you know cool dude, you know good baseball sound mm-hmm. sound guy. I want to see him. I want to see him win to a point. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so I, I totally get it, man. I think I think unlike maybe the Guardians, people hang the Mets last World Series overhead the most. You know what I mean? So like I, I would totally root for my team, but the Astros are just they're hard to figure out, and they change your weaknesses weekly. It's just hard to figure out what they what you can do to beat them, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, it it is tough uh, having to deal with the Astros and how strategic they are, how smart they are when when it comes to making moves. Like you said, uh, they situate weaknesses uh, on on a daily basis, almost it feels like. But this is the year. That's all I'm gonna say. This is the year. Unfortunately, um, it's gonna be a Raldis Chapman to close it out. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, why do you guys still have a job? <laughs> Imagine. Hey. And that goes on too late. Uh, well, question though. Let me ask you though, Yankee fan. What's the deal with Judge and is that home run record? Because I feel like you don't really should count AL home run records with the league that damn near integrated. What What does that even mean? Isn't the home run record 73? Isn't it? Yeah, it is, but it, it's just like a, it's it, it, they're doing it like the separate league record. And then, you know, how people have the opinion of, uh, did he do it clean? Did he and all that? It, it, it's it, it's real subjective. I, I know, I and mean, it, it's a subjective thing. But I'm gonna say I'm gonna I'm gonna say for sure he's the he he'd be the AL. What does that mean, bro? Like with, with the balanced schedule, universal DH. What does that mean to have an AL record in 2022? What is it? You know, really? Tell tell me. 
it, I mean, it kind of it kind of makes sense because there there are a lot of games played against each league now. Like it's not like it used to be last year where it was like one or two series. True. Yeah. No, I see. I see what you're saying. But um, uh, I'm not a hater, by the way. Judge is yeah, no, but I'm just saying. You're good. Um. We need something. We need something when Houston, when, when, Houston, when Houston bounces us out this year. We need something to hold on to that made the season memorable. I respect that. <laughs> Let me live, Lobo. All right, bye, please. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, uh, you mentioned that you were into boxing a, a good bit. I am, uh, I'm all into boxing. Uh, do you have any fighters off the top of your head that you're uh, fans of mostly? Well, here's the thing. I just do more commentary. So I, I don't really watch the sport as a fan fan. I do commentary for local events mm-hmm. out here in Los Angeles and, and more, more notably the uh, Influencer mm-hmm. Fight League, uh, which takes like TikTok stars and influencer stars and put them in actual boxing things. And so I would say I've learned a lot about that sport and I, and I love the sweet science of it, but I don't really have a favorite boxer. I didn't really grow up with that. Uh, I didn't have cable mm-hmm. growing up. Didn't grow up with the HBO culture, the Showtime culture, uh, as was unfortunate for me, but I respect the craft. From the TikTok uh, celebrity stuff, yeah. uh, how do you like boxing from that? So it's interesting because you can tell who's doing it just to be for content, which is kind of weird, right? I'm being a yeah. fight for content, <laughs> but this get my ass whooped for content. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but there's th- those who actually go here and train, and for me too, I want to be able to give those who take it seriously as seriously as as well. So I always hit up commentators in that sport to learn about stances, learn about uh, parries and feints, and all the technical things to give them that kind of. That, that you just do, but at the same time, my job is to entertain people who are coming from Snapchat, who are coming from TikTok, who may not even care about an orthodox stance or not. And so it really is a balance because I originally did pro professional wrestling commentary, which isn't really a sport in that way. It's really more of, of theater. So mm. being able to just bridge that gap between the sports, uh, the sports side of boxing and entertainment side of the influencer stuff has been so much fun for me. I see where you're coming from. When it when it comes to the influencer boxing, for me, I, I don't have any problems with it. I just I just kind of see it as as long as the sport is being respected, it's all good to me. Just do your thing. But I don't know. I feel like there's some a couple of guys out there that are a little out of pocket with it. But are you pro Paul or anti Paul? I was just uh, about to uh, anti anti Paul specifically. Just okay. Like, I, I I don't know. Um, I feel like when he's mentioning guys like Canelo's name. Yeah, it, it, it's just like, oh, you just fought Nate Robinson, and you're you're gonna call out Canelo. I, it, it just he, it's like it's it's obvious how unrealistic it is, and then it's just shit talk to shit talk. Kind of, I know I know he has a huge platform in itself already, but it almost feels sure. like he's using Canelo's name to build his name up in cl- uh, in boxing. Oh, absolutely. So I was talking with uh, Andy Shepard, uh, who is a commentator for professional wrestling, but he also does uh, Bellator. Uh, mm-hmm. out there uh, some of the european events and i was like how do you feel about this the the idea of someone like uh a, a jake jake yeah jake paul calling out these boxers or whatever and he's like you know what one jake takes the training seriously and two he's doing something that i uh, hate not to compare the two but something that ali did that boxers now don't do a lot of boxers now have a management team they just say hey look promote me but there really isn't one saying step right up and watch this fight and you look at mma guys that flame out like a McGregor or uh, a Chell Sonnen in their heyday got buys because they were doing that. So he goes, I don't think he's the best boxer, but he's actually serving a purpose, which is kind of a weird way of looking at it. But I hear what you're saying. If you're, if you're a purist, you're going, this guy, he, he's not it. <laughs> yeah. And it's not even that I'm not going to deny that he's not working hard. I'm, I'm sure. Well, obviously it takes an insane amount of dedication to get well-versed in boxing, but it it just it, it's it just feels a little weird to me knowing that there's there's boxers out there. Not even saying that he doesn't deserve the platform. You know he's got his platform. He sure. can make plenty of money off of it. That's not the issue. It's just I feel like as though for the sake of money, some guys who are more deserving of say a title shot with a a pound for pound best fighter, I feel like that might take priority in a Go case ahead. like. And I, I just don't want to see that happen. I don't want to see Jake Paul take on Canelo Alvarez for a world title when Jake Paul beat the ranked 250th guy in that weight class. I feel the same way with wrestling fans with Logan Paul being signed by WWE mm. and challenging Roman Reigns at Crown Jewel. You're just like, <laughs> who? and they approve this? I, I totally get what you're saying. I mean, it, 
there's a lot of really hardworking non sideshow personalities, I guess, that are probably deserving. But you know, it's it's all about making a noise, and that sucks. Mm-hmm. And that's just the way we are, you know. Yeah, it is what it is. But um, I'd be lying if I were to say that I wouldn't tune into a Canelo Jake Paul fight. But yeah. <laughs> The PCB out for blood. Like, yo, kick his ass, bro. No, that's exactly <laughs> what I was going to be saying, too. <laughs> I, I have a quick question about wrestling. I, I was yeah. into WWE pretty, like, a lot as a kid. Uh, I feel like I got out of it as Roman Reigns was getting in, like, sure. like building his name. How long has he been, I guess, at the top now? I feel like it's, uh, been, it's been about long. two years. I think they had the two year celebration about two weeks ago of this recording of him with the title, uh, right, right in SummerSlam or, or Payback 2020. He, uh, he got the championship. Um, and it's funny because wrestling, professional wrestling in general, is designed for kids. It's designed mm-hmm. for you to be mommy, daddy, take me out to the arena what's in town. I'll buy the cotton cane program and I'll watch it. So don't be ashamed if you're like, yeah, you know, I kind of watched it and ah, I'm out of it because most people do that. Uh, and of course, you're supposed to get back into it when you have kids of your own. It becomes like a cycle type deal. Mm. Uh, if you're weird like me and then become a lifelong fan uh, and start to learn the nuance and, and love the certain things and whatever, Roman Reigns is on a whole different level. Here is somebody that was pushed to the moon. He was considered the golden boy. Everyone in the stands saw that, was like, nah, and booed him out the building. And then he took a break because he was he's immunocompromised, and so he didn't work during the first couple of months of the pandemic because uh, he's a leukemia survivor mm-hmm. twice. He came back and with this whole new persona, this whole new idea that he's a bad guy, but he's doing it because for his family and his notoriety, and everyone eats because he eats mafioso boss status, and it is the biggest thing in professional wrestling now. Is it compared to Hulk Hogan? No. But if I said who is one of the more like marquee champions, you're not going to say John Moxley in AEW. You're going to say Roman Reigns because he comes out with Paul Heyman, his cousins, his new cousin, a guy pretending to be his cousin, all down to the ring at the same time. <laughs> I feel that. I saw you do this when I when I first brought it up. John yeah. Cena was my guy as a yeah. kid. That, that, that was my number one guy for sure. <laughs> yeah, respect. Well, the thing is, as someone that grew up before that era, it took a long time for me to come around. You know, that's that was when my friend stopped watching. And that was after mm-hmm. Stone Cold, after The Rock. It was like, oh, WWE, it's lame, it's for kids. But but watching the matches and watching what Cena did for kids, and he was that superhero, it was like you can't knock him. So he's never on my list personally. He doesn't make me feel that way, but I yeah. I can't deny the craft. I can't deny the influences. He has a Guinness World Records for the most make a wish is granted at 650 and counting. I mean, that guy was a positive beacon for the sport when it's totally needed one. So shout out to my man John. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, so I know uh, you mentioned uh, you have a podcast with WWE. So do you want to talk about that for a minute? Yeah, so WWE used to have their own podcasting network, and they sold all their podcasts to a studio called The Ringer. And The Ringer is now a studio within Spotify. So, like Almost like how Pixar is you into Disney kind of a thing. So they have three wrestling podcasts. I'm on the Tuesday show. It's called Mac Mania alongside Jack Farmer and Evan T. Mac, the name show's name after. We're kind of more like the, the rowdy college kids or the rowdy lunch kids, you know, just talking about wrestling in a cool way every tuesday we talk about the top news and stories in wrestling what's happening with wwe pay-per-views and more uh the big events like wrestlemania SummerSlam. we are actually on site we get to interview some of the talent so it's pretty cool to be part of that family uh and it's cool to say hey look i i kind of inadvertently work for wwe even though my texts come from spotify <laughs> i kind of have this side-by-side agreement with wwe and their talent so it's kind of fun well that's awesome yeah that's definitely dope so um You've been to the event, uh, WrestleMania, SummerSlam, those kind of events already just to cover it. What would you say is the craziest thing you've seen? Because I know I've been out of the mix for a while. Uh, Didn't didn't, uh, The Undertaker lose to Triple H or something in WrestleMania a couple years ago? Well, uh, Undertaker retired in uh, 2000, 2000 at WrestleMania 2020. Excuse me, WrestleMania 2020 had the last match, Boneyard match, retire right after that. But uh, they're trying to, to bring back uh, 
Taker's one man show. It's called Dead Man Talking, I think it is, or Dead Man mm -hmm. Tales. And so when you have these big events, uh, let's say let's say Saturday nights is night one of WrestleMania. The Sunday morning, there's like a, a a little like theater show you can go watch Undertaker tell stories about how he was going back in the day. But these events, the big one, the big four, we're talking the Survivor Series, Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, Survivor Series, they they have grown so much. I mean, they're in football arenas. WrestleMania was at Cowboy Stadium. SummerSlam was at Nissan Stadium in Nashville. Uh, it, I mean, 40,000 people, 70,000 people for these things. Uh, I got invited to VIP catering. There's like a private luxury box seats and stuff. Like wrestling has come so far from like, hey, here's your popcorn kid, <laughs> you know, <laughs> watch the show. You people go and they get dressed up. Saudi Arabia gets two pay-per-views a year where they fly out to the Middle East. And, and during the, the high season, Korea that season, and they, they have a wrestling show. It is like such a premium experience, now, or it can be if you have the cash for it, that it is just surreal. So the crazy thing I saw was flying into Nashville for SummerSlam and having the entire city have banners in the streets and side events and live podcasts featuring The Miz and hospitality suites. And they took over some of the stores at WWE merchandise. Like it was like a Comic Con for just a single night, a single event there at Nissan Stadium. That's dope, man. That, that's, that's just real dope. I, I just wanted to ask this uh, regarding wrestling and baseball. Uh, who is your favorite wrestler of all time? And who is your favorite baseball player of all time? If you want to get into those. Of all, of all, of all, all time. time. All uh, time. I get so much crap for this. So I, I would say D'Lo Brown's my favorite wrestler of all time from the late nineties uh, because he has such a varied moveset. He went off the top rope. He was technical. He was strong. Like me had a little bit of the, uh, he was a little bit of a thick boy like me growing up. So that was my favorite of all time. Um, currently now uh, I'm a big Seamus guy. I think Seamus is oh, the Seamus. most decorated uh, active wrestler. Now the only title he doesn't have or hasn't won is the IC title, uh, but he's won everything else. Mind the bank, uh, Royal rumble. He's won them all. So that's my favorite right now, right now. Uh, for baseball, currently I'm a Sterling Marte guy, but even though he's uh, he's uh, injured. But when I was a kid, even though I was a big Mets fan, uh, I sound like an old man. Back in my day, the leagues were split, you see. And then I'll never play the AL. So I was a big White Sox fan because they would play the Yankees and beat the Yankees all the time. And so I was I was a big Frank Thomas fan as a kid, the Big Hurt. I uh, mm -hmm. had all his games. He had his own line of uh, malt liquor called Big Hurt Beer. Bought that, <laughs> you know. <laughs> he sells eugenics. I might get that when I get older. Like, Frank <laughs> Thomas was my dude, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> I want to be him so bad. Oh, Frank, Frank's a legend. He's an MLB The Show legend. Oh, yeah, he exactly. always gets the good drops. Yeah. Uh, Alex mentioned this to me earlier, though, uh, real quick. You into MLB The Show at all? I got 21. That was a Tatis year. Mm -hmm. um, I don't. I don't. I don't get the the, the 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 pack stuff. Like I don't get the the My Dynasty stuff. But uh, I do play like Road to the Show. Mm -hmm. I'm still playing that now. I'm on like my seventh season. A first baseman for the White Sox, <laughs> Storm Reyes himself. <laughs> you know what I mean? I feel that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's dope that you got 21 because uh, 22. Uh, not worth not it. Not very good. <laughs> uh, not <laughs> worth it. You know what's kind of funny though? But that's when baseball games used to drop when I was a kid. It was like in the fall, like now. And when I was a kid, my mom would get us around like um the uh, the holiday season. She let us get like two games from Blockbuster or three mm -hmm. games. So it became like a tra tradition. So last October, the show 21 was like seven ninety nine dollars in the Xbox store. I was like, ah, oh, check it out. And I was just hooked. I was playing it. Mm -hmm. Won the World Series with the Oakland A's. It was great. <laughs> the soundtrack was dope, you know? Oh, that's dope. I feel like I'd probably be into the game more if I was only doing that. No, once I <laughs> dove full in, yeah, I realized I was like, yeah, this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's a time suck. Like, cause I don't know how it is on other platforms, but for the Xbox and on Twenty One, the loading times are kind of like, all right, we're just gonna hang out here for a bit. I'm gonna play. You know, why should do something else? <laughs> and then the <laughs> server drops after you right. wait like thirty seconds. <laughs> like, come on. You know? Uh, no, but uh, speaking of uh, games and stuff, I saw that you uh, do commentating for Rocket League too. So you want to talk a little bit about that? Talk about that pandemic, man. Uh, imagine being a stand-up comedian and in the world saying, hey, you, stay home. You're not essential. And so I was sitting at home not knowing what to do. So I used to play Rocket League just to pass the time because you couldn't look for work, couldn't do anything special. And I got, I got into this uh, senior league. And by seniors, I mean players over the age of 30. Uh, and they were having a tournament and they came to me and they said, Hey, look, you're a comedian. You want to tell some jokes over the games. So like 
granted, they were cheesy jokes, like, you know, pull over, Grandpa, and it's time for your nap, things like that. Uh, so I did that, and people go, hey, man, you sound like you don't suck. You probably look into that. There's a couple of Rocket League orgs on Discord, and I was like, what's a Discord? And I had to learn that, too. And so it became a crazy journey during the pandemic, learning Discord, just practicing the reps of Rocket League. And I guess because I come from professional wrestling commentary, and I don't really get into the the machinations of what a good dodge or what a good aerial goal i go what a maneuver how i can ever recover from this you know what i mean i get really <laughs> excited <laughs> like pat mcafee uh, or, or like a, a Corey graves that a lot of times i get booked for these kind of things and so rocket league is such a game i love to play personally and being able to go to these events and 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 really just show out my love for this game it has been so much fun and so as novanta or novanta rl uh, I've been able to to be a part of so many different organizations and so many different tournaments. Oh, that's awesome. I just started to get into Rocket League recently. I watched uh, the Worlds uh, this past summer. So um, I've I've just started to get into it, and I'm really enjoying it. Oh, it's fantastic. I was kind of hoping that I would get called to do Worlds because uh, Psyonix knows who I am because I did the college circuit this year, CRL, mm -hmm. um, which is actually my, my – if you play me in the game, my, my tag goes CRL analyst. Uh, but uh, yeah, that I, the worlds this year were the biggest ones ever because the first one really back since the pandemic, so the entire world was watching. Flobo, man, it's been dope to have you on. Uh, yeah, I, I need and just because of the shade from earlier, though, uh, I need to see how you would feel once the Yankees uh beat the Mets in five in the World Series this year. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> hey, you gotta get through Houston. How's that even gonna be a thing? You gotta be kidding me. Oh, hey, yeah, your a Braves fan. Are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah, no, but it's like. Either or, either or, the Yankees in five. Like that, no, <laughs> you think Yankees in five? No, absolutely not. Your team is nah. not that good. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> being, <laughs> being realistic, yeah, you're right. Yeah, come on, maybe, Donaldson, please. No, maybe if we still had Gallo, but yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, if you had Donald, <laughs> Gallo, if you had Donald versus Gallo, I'll just shot, man. Um, if that were to happen, I, I would. I would send you a text with a, with a, with one of those like slanty frowny faces. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's all I would say. But I, I that's not gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> that was hot that was real hot christian <laughs> hey, more like houston in five in, in the championship series that's i yeah i'm not really confident in the yankees as much as i've been enjoying the season not confident. don't get me wrong as someone that lived through 2000 or uh, i will start 2001 i would love to have a subway series a real one like a real subway mm -hmm. series uh where we were, actually was even but if you guys somehow, like, I don't know, like tie the legs of all of the Astros together, they trip out there in the field and win a game, then maybe. <laughs> no, no, I don't, don't want to say. I was about to let off a shot at Houston, but then I was like, that that, that would have been like out of nowhere. <laughs> hey, you know, when it comes down to people with, with asterisks and stuff, if they don't strike the record, you got to count them. You got to count it. <laughs> Baseball had an opportunity. They said, nope. So you got to count it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, that, that was that was weird. That was weird how they handled that. Uh None of the players getting even touched, but I'm going to not get into that too much because then people could bring up the fact that the Yankees have a cheating scandal that nobody talks about. I'd rather not. <laughs> I'd rather not. <laughs> Garrett Cole is a pine tar? What? I wasn't even thinking about that one. Also. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that one. Or the other one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the other cheating scandal. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. As long as it's not judged this season, I'm cool with it, though. He, right, he's, he's doing it. He's doing his thing this year. Yeah. Oh, all right. Last thing. I want to get your opinion. We've talked about it. A couple of things. What's your opinion on the AL MVP? Do you think it's Judge or Otani? I thought it was Otani for a long time, uh, just because if if Otani was not on the Angels, they would be even more pathetic than they were. Mm -hmm. But their season has been mathematically eliminated for weeks. You have more coverage in the Triple Crown race. Judge might get it by like a, a what a hundredth. Of a batting average, it has to be judged. I feel like mm -hmm. Otani will become the platinum standard. He'll be the AL MVP for as long as he's in the AL. You know what I mean? But when you have someone like this doing this this year, it'd be kind of weird to say, sorry, Judge, we're going to go to someone like Otani. On a, on a, basically a team that was so directionless, they don't know how to make Trout and Otani work. Mm -hmm. So even though I think he was valuable to the Angels, much like how I, was, I would say Alonzo is valuable to the Mets, I don't think it, it really is a, a battle. It's pretty much judging and run away. Yeah, I feel the same way about that. And all credit to Otani, though. Like you said, the gold standard. 
it, it's just yeah a season like judge is having this year that it's not often um mm -hmm. way better with all due respect to vladdy jr season last year uh otani has a much harder uh competitor when it comes to this a uh mvp race yeah. that's my thought on it i think it's judge for sure but to each their own. I, I, I don't know where Otani's going to go. That's oh, my thing. That. Otani, where he's going to go. I know the whole thing back then it was I wanted some place with a DH. I wanted some place that was close to flying back home. But you can catch a quick flight from anywhere in this country. And his DH is universal. So. You can go anywhere now. You can go Otani anywhere and pinstripes. Now. Yes. What? Otani and pinstripes. No. <laughs> You're yeah. dreaming. I mean, hey, you got pinstripes on. Who do, who do, how do you know I'm talking about us? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> I really hope he's a villain. Shut up. <laughs> I'm, looking out, I'm, looking out, I'm looking out for y'all. Yeah. I, well, who was oh, a Padres? Oh, you say Philly? I was saying pinstripes. Yeah. Padres, Phillies. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> nah, if Otani went to the Phillies, like, ew, ew. All right. <laughs> it'd, it'd be yeah. like basically the same situation in the. LA. Oh yeah, put him in put him in Pittsburgh, just sitting on his island. <laughs> like this sucks. Oh, that would be terrible for him. <laughs> Lobo man, anything else you want to share though before we, we wrap this up? Yeah, if you want to check out the Mac Mania podcast every Tuesday for Spotify original, presented by The Ringer. My book, we talked about some of the chapters. It's called Graduation Day, available on Amazon. It's called Graduation Day, Life Lessons from the Real World. And, of course, flowbito.com, F-L-O-B-I-T-O.com. We'll see, though. I'm, I'm looking forward to keeping in touch when both of our teams make this, all three of our teams make a deep playoff run, when you guys situate your situation in the championship series because L.A. is going to choke it again. Um, yeah, hot take, but it's going to happen. And then when we it get looks by like we'll be playing LA as of now. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Oh you know, wait, gonna... is it going to be the Brewers or the Phillies? Because as I as I record this, I think they were like slipping on a band appeal. Oh <laughs> uh, well, one and two get a bye. Oh so okay, gotcha, gotcha. Three will play six, and then four will play five. So we'll we're we have the Padres right now, and the Cardinals have the Phillies. Got it, got it, got it. Dope. That does it for another episode of the All Takes No Wish podcast. We uh, we loved having you on Flobo, and look forward to another episode next week. Thanks. Peace. Peace.